and we're going to be talking about digitalization initiatives in the pharmaceutical industry. So let's check out some concrete examples and, initi uh, and initiatives on how Siemens works with companies in the pharmaceutical field by integrating digitalization. The expert, of course, not myself. Um, he's a global account. Uh, he's from the global account development uh, 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 division, I guess, at Siemens. Please welcome Andrew Whitehawk. Thank you. I got Thanks your name Chris. correct yeah. this time. Thanks, Chris. All right, go for it. Practice makes perfect, huh? <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to our short and brief and exciting presentation on what's happening in the pharmaceutical industry. What we wanted to do was just give you an overview of some real concrete examples of what's happening, try and give an introduction to people so you can have a feel as well of some of the things we're showing on our highlight cube. How many of you here are working in the pharmaceutical industry? Not so many, I guess. Right, that's good, that's the plan, because what I want to do is talk you through what is happening in our industry, talk you through some of the challenges that are happening, and then give you some nice, easy to understand examples, which we can see a little bit on our highlight cube a little bit later, if you come and see me. So, the first point is, what is the real pharmaceutical production process, or the pharmaceutical is divided into three key areas, the development, the drug development, which is finding molecules, doing clinical trials. It's a long and collaborative process, takes, can take six, seven, eight years, and requires a lot of information and a, a large amount of people um, to, discover and uh, to discover the drug. Then we have the, drug, uh, the primary processing, or uh, API, manufacture API, meaning active pharmaceutical ingredients. And here, the principle is we make it in bulk, we make these big bulk um, uh, manufacturing facilities where we can either produce bio, making it from cells, cell culture, chemicals from uh, synthetic, or even extracting from blood. So medicine is extracted at that level from uh, um, in the primary process. And then secondly, into secondary process, we put it into packaging, into uh, tablets and so on, into bottles and stuff. Come on in, there's plenty of space. Please come on in if you want to sit down. There's no problem at all. Huh? Um, anyway, so what are the challenges? The main challenges which we've heard about, are, or which we talk about a lot, of course, are efficiency. This is a real, real focus for the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, secondly is the idea of um, flexibility. And we have this great example, which you may have heard about or seen, which I'll talk about a little bit later, of the flexibility to be able to manufacture a batch for one person. Individualized production of personalized medicine. So we show this on our stand and also can talk about this a little bit later. Um, thirdly, the uh, time to market, bringing drugs more quickly, making that um, process between R&D and manufacturing a lot smoother. And finally, and often most importantly, the regulatory aspects. If you don't follow the regulations, you can't produce the drugs. There's the American FDA is one of the most, more, more well-known um, bodies which doesn't allow us to, or would not allow a manufacturer to produce drugs if they're not done properly. This means that there's lots of uh, requirements around regulations, around documentation and so forth. So. Technology, how is technology driving and thinking about these different factors? How is technology driving that change in the pharmaceutical industry? I talk through some of these different examples. The first ones really being continuous manufacturing and paperless manufacturing. These are the two key areas in which we're focusing within our pharma competence center, in, uh, and which we show a little bit further down. But also big data and analytics and simulation, material, plant simulation becoming very, very important trends in the industry. 3D printing, additive manufacturing, we see an example of um, implants which are being uh, manufactured, but we've now seen the first 3D pills. Pills are now being, or tablets are now being produced, and um, regulated tablets, because they dissolve a lot quicker. They dissolve really quickly in the mouth. Now, don't worry, Siemens is not making those pills yet, but we're working on ways in which we can support companies in these types of um, processes. And then finally, the final point is about robotics. And this is something which we see as an essential part for many, many different areas of manufacturing, but perhaps most importantly in the personalized um, medicine example where we see some examples of that. These challenges are making that transformation. So it's around technology. It's around the plant changing the way that people work. It's about making sure that there's a real connection and a collaboration in this sophisticated network, meaning between suppliers, contract manufacturers, R&D, many different sites, a very global 
um, enterprise. And then finally, um, one which I find the most interesting is the way that people are changing. The way that it's changing people and the way that they work within. So how do we, how do the, because people are often and will always be needed in making drugs for the documentation, for the flexibility. So how do we integrate people into these types of digital process? And again, this is an interesting example, which I will try, or there is an interesting example, which I will come to in a few minutes. So innovative concepts, manufacturing concepts. This is something that our customers, the global uh, pharmaceutical accounts or companies are coming to us and asking us to help them on some of the different innovative concepts that we do. And I'll go through some of these different ones. The first one, paperless manufacturing. This is about taking the paper out of the process. When you produce or when a pharmaceutical company produces um, a batch, they can have four, 500, 600 pages of documentation. They need to write down every single step they've done, every gram that they've weighed, every single in piece of information about the expiry date of the raw materials, the speed. All this information needs to be going into that record of production. Traditionally, if that's in paper, it's very hard to keep track of that, to keep a real view of exactly what happened during that production. And at the end, when we need to review that, it can take us a long time to go through so many pages. Paperless manufacturing records that information in an electronic format, as we can see here, where an operator can click and is guided through a process. Do this, do that. So it's not just about recording the information, it's also guiding an operator or a person to do that in the right way. And we see this here, it's a great example of the photograph there, where um, the person is just about to do, uh, or you can't see the detail, about to do some kind of a, a release. So what are those, in, those advantages of paperless? It's about integrating a recipe, a workflow, integrating the HMI or the, uh, the screen, yeah, the, the, the operator screen being able to switch between different systems. So that would be between an automated system and other uh, ERP systems and so forth. And perhaps most importantly is being able to have this integration of the deviations, the appendices, the information that's required for that final release. So reducing that approval time can be key. Continuous manufacturing, what's continuous manufacturing? And here is an example of uh, one of the first um, or the first approved continuous uh, production plant which we've been working on in Puerto Rico where the challenge is really to be feeding in continuously raw material in different dosages, getting them to blend together and to actually come out as tablets in exactly the right way, in exactly uniform. And this challenge is around, really comes around analyzing and understanding what's actually happening in my process, what's actually happening in that blender or in that mixer. And for this, I need to understand the process. I have technology called Process Analytical Technology, or PAT. Siemens has a system which we show called SIPAT. It's a centralized control system which does the analytics or provides information for analytics so that we know that as soon as that product comes out, it's OK. It's called release um, by exception or real-time release. I can go into, we can spend many days talking about continuous manufacturing, but as an overview, this is something that our uh, customers are really, really focusing on. Quickly, single use is a big challenge. Flexibility in bio API, and we have an example of a bioreactor here, where the challenge is single use means using a plastic bag for the uh, manufacturing. So we see an example here, and actually on our stand as well. Imagine in the kitchen, every time you change the rubbish, you don't change the bin. Yeah? You don't clean the bin, you just change the bag. And flexible, single-use manufacturing is this principle where we have a plastic bag, we're able to put in sensors, get the information, and really understand what's happening inside my reactor so that I can really make that release and really understand the process. Okay? What's the benefit? Reducing cleaning times and reducing the changeover times. This example comes back to my labor modernization point and how labor uh, or people are working today. How do we get people to interact with machines? So we've been working with GSK, a UK company or UK pharmaceutical manufacturer on their project called IIM. And I'm sure you've seen lots of three letter acronyms in the last few hours or few days. Um, IIM is one you will not know because it's a unique one. It stands for Intelligent Immersive 
manufacturing. Immersing and being intelligent, allowing the user to really interact with information in a real facility. And here we see the example of large dashboards, which is showing me the progress of the batch. But they're also using authentication with wristbands, with um, manual interventions and complexity, with uh, scheduling, um, smart scheduling, and, and of course, uh, electronic batch recording and review by exception. My final example is the personalized medicine one, which I talked about a few minutes ago. BioNTech is a German company based in Mainz, and we have a great video which goes into more detail on this where they extract a cell from a patient, and based on that cell, they manufacture a personalized medicine for that individual pa patient. This is a vaccine against cancer. It's called immunotherapy. So there's somebody who's already had cancer, but they take based on their cell count and they are able to, um, to provide a, a vaccine that the cancer will not come back. It's a great story, it's a great success, but the problem is when you're doing individualized medicine, the cost, yeah? It takes, it costs a whole, whole lot of money for us to be able to, or for them, so a treatment can cost upwards of 50, 60, 70,000 euros or pounds per patient or dollars as well, <laughs> um, per patient. And of course, this doesn't become so commercially viable. So what we do is we work with them to really bring down the, or improve the efficiency and bring down the cost of the manufacture of these personalized medicines. If you're interested in more, because it's a great story, we've got articles and a video on this, um, which we'd be more than willing to share with you. So, so in summary, we've talked about, or I've talked about very briefly, a couple of these different initiatives, paperless, continuous, single-use flexible, the factory of the future. These are just examples of what we're doing. There are many others in which we're working, in which we're doing different things to really assist our customers on some of these innovative concepts. And what we want to show to you in our Pharma Highlight Cube further down, as well as what I'm talking about today, is that this is real. These are things that we are really doing with customers today and really using data and digitalization to help them in their transformation towards their digital enterprise. On that note, I think I've finished. It's finished. If anyone has any questions? No? Great. OK, well, thanks very much for your time. Please come and visit me on the PharmaCube. I'm around all day today and all week, and I'm Perfect, Andrew. Interesting? Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, You're that welcome. was interesting. Big applause. Sorry Absolutely. for speaking so quickly. I get so excited when I see such an exciting audience. You Absolutely. Know? <laughs> and it definitely is exciting, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Andrew. Okay. So if I'll you have questions on pharma topics, please do visit him at the pharma booth, which is like two thirds toward the end of these 126 meters in length what we have here on the booth. But it's the center, so, really, even if it's oh, this two is the heartbeat. Away, the heart, yeah. This is where digitalization. digitalization.